What's happening, everybody? I hope you're doing good. It's a beautiful evening. Thank you very much for stopping by. It's lovely outside. I really can't show you, but it's beautiful. Really, really nice. Thank you so much for watching us tonight again. I'm um, very pleased to speak to you today about Liberia. George Weah, I know we don't talk about this very much, but Liberia is a beautiful country. Let me put the map right here. That's Liberia for you. Uh, they've gone through so many things, so many difficulties. But um, George Weah, who was the president, was praised internationally for releasing power. Uh, basically, what happened was there were three elections, and after the election, he admitted to have lost the election. This is new, okay? This is n very much non African. Most African presidents just cling on to power, they don't let it go. They lose the elections. They don't want to let it go. It's just like, well, they get drunk with power. Power is crazy. It's like very addictive once you love it. And George Weah was really a class act. And he was praised internationally for immediately admitting defeat on the presidential election and promoting a non-violent transfer of power in a region plagued with power grabs. Political veterans, Bukai, 78 years old, former vice president of ellen johnson i don't know if you remember ellen johnson she was the very first african female president i'm sure you remember her now the man that was her vice president has now become the president of the republic of liberia congratulations congratulations george Weah, such a class act saying you know what uh let's not fight each other okay let's not uh, do this to one another okay I've lost. And he didn't lose very much because they say Joseph Bokai won 50% and George Weah was 49%. So literally the difference between them were 20,000 vote. In any other country, most of the time they will fight over that. Yeah, they will fight over 20,000 vote because people don't want to release power. Okay, they think about all the opportunities there because unfortunately for many African people, power is about riches it's about wealth it's about opportunities and sometimes presidents in africa uh come with good ideas you know they want to be actually democratic now what happens unfortunately it's usually the people around them that will say to him hey when are you going to get this opportunity again you have such a great opportunity blessing from heaven to enrich yourself and your family why do you want to release power don't be stupid if you don't want the power anymore we still want it yeah those are the people of his family that are going to talk to him like that those are some of his best friends that's going to talk to him like that and unfortunately this happens in uh, you know cost of m the majority of the population that suffers because a group of people are just power hungry and i think this is a beautiful lesson here fellas uh george Weah. who is george Weah? i know many people don't know it because uh, some of us are very young maybe or some of us um we're not very much involved with soccer okay football for some of you george Weah was born in 1966 he's a liberian politician and a former professional soccer player okay soccer player uh he's the incumbent president of liberia he played as a striker in his prolific 18 years career he played in europe uh, george Weah was one of the best players of his time um after he played football, you know, successful career, he decided to go back to politics and help his country move forward. That's why, fellas, um, I love it when the president has got money. Yeah, especially in Africa, because I feel like when the president has got money, um, there isn't much to shock him or surprise him. The problem is when those presidents that come from poor background become presidents in Africa, unfortunately, they become evil because they learn that they can make a lot of money and they have nobody to respond to they learn they can build villas for the multiple wives they learn they can have opportunities banks they can assign people of his family of their family of their group into power it becomes very difficult for the population they learn that they can take money that was assigned for hospitals and do their own private stuff okay but when the president used to have money like george Weah, clearly a professional athlete he doesn't have the same problems 
not to say that you know as a professional athlete you won't be loving money i'm just saying is used to it okay as a professional athlete or a serial entrepreneur a real businessman that makes real money you're not shocked by these small things anymore so you're working in fact not because of the money you're working because you want to see the country move forward and i'm saying the majority obviously cannot be everybody but the majority of people who have money have nothing to look forward to becoming president apart from the fact of trying to better the country in my view i personally think that um, if they should not exclude the poor people into becoming president i think they should prioritize people who have money because um, at, until at least people get the maturity to know how to separate or at least justice becomes strong enough that can get people accountable for stealing and looting and taking things from the country unfortunately i mean we've seen in many african countries yeah a guy comes from nowhere all of a sudden boom president of the republic he, he becomes fatter than he was before bigger he eats more he has more wives more cars more villas in the meantime it takes years before they build the road it takes years before they build hospitals projects are unfinished schools are unfinished they will serve money to build schools but then the schools are unfinished then by the end of their term, they still want to be voted as president for another term. You hear that? So they had the full term, five years of doing absolutely nothing. Then by the end of the term, at year number four, they try to make a lot of efforts, campaign into trying to get people to vote for them. I, I think that should stop. And it shouldn't matter whether these people are your family members, because I know in Africa, generally, you only criticize governments when they're not part of your family. As soon as your family is part of the presidential court, then you don't criticize anymore. And you hate everybody that talks the truth by pointing fingers at the negative things that they are doing. And that is very sad. And Africa can never progress or develop or be democratic if we are our own oppressors. You know, you can't just blame Europeans for colonialism and slavery. If we perpetuating stealing and we glorifying robbing and it's just crazy you see a country like the drc for some of you know these people clap hands for government officials that become rich they say hey congratulations it's your turn to be wealthy i, I never understood these people this is crazy how do you clap hands for politicians that are stealing i mean the man was clearly poor before he became politician okay Two months down the line, he's got buildings, multiple buildings, he's got shops, businesses, he married four wives, and you are clapping for him, saying, oh, look at the beautiful car he's driving in, instead of calling them into accountability. And you expect these people to stop behaving this way? And then I was worried, I was trying to understand why can normal human beings think this way? How can normal be human beings clap for somebody that's stealing from them? You know what the response is? The answer is very clear. It's very simple. It's because everybody that's clapping for that person is expecting and hope that one day it's going to be his opportunity. Okay, because they don't... I mean, there's a solution. The solution is very simple. If a politician steals, take him, throw him in jail. If you cannot, you know, shut him down, then at least throw him in jail. But these people don't want that. You know why they don't want to punish politicians that are stealing? Because they're hoping that their turn is going to come. So their turn to steal will come. Therefore, when their turn comes where they're going to steal, there shouldn't be repercussion either because they did not apply any force on the people that were stealing before them. That is very, very sad. So again, congratulations. Outstanding leadership from George Weah. Um, he said, tonight the CDC has lost the election, but Liberia has won. The CDC is political party is lost, but Liberia is won. Well. He said to his people, I urge my supporters, he urged his supporters to follow his example and accept the result. Our time will come again. Be patient. That's George Weah. I think this is a great lesson, fellas. Um, learning from a president of Africa who clearly wants to live in a positive light of everybody. It's sad. Look, there are many African presidents that don't want to leave power, you know. Look at the president of Cameroon. The guy's been there for thousands of years. He's almost 90 years old, I think, or something. I mean, like, are you going to tell me that there's nobody that can assume that responsibility? 
within the whole of Cameroon, no one is no one that can do the job. I, I don't know. You know, it's not just him. There are many other presidents in Africa that's been there for many, many years. And it's very sad. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these people will lose election. And when they lose election, they will do anything. They will shut the internet down. They will block the place. They will block, they will arrest people. They'll create mayhem just so they can continue staying in power. And this is what's destroying the continent. Nothing to do with Europe. Somebody intelligent won't say, if there is no evil inside, the evil outside can do us no harm. That means if we have no internal problems, the people of outside have no power over us. Thank you very much, fellas. Always a great pleasure. Let me know how you feel about this. Jean Jouer, soccer player with dignity. President, I mean, after his soccer player career, became president of the Republic. Now in defeat, still elegant. He says, you know what? We've lost, but Labira is won. God bless.